Recently, I borrowed the new 2021 Speedmaster from official Amiga AD Moya to shoot a review and compare it to an older model. At the end of the video, I discussed what killed off my obsession of collecting Speedmasters. While I still deliberate if I should buy it yet again, today I want to discuss the exact opposite. What started my obsession with the Speedy in the first place? It's an equally insightful look at watch collecting in general. Also how intelligent design, men's style, great filmmaking and classic watchmaking all combine. So let's get into it. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And as we're discussing Speedmasters today, naturally, <laughs> sorry, it's a bit too smooth. Naturally, I'm wearing the Dan Henry 1962 on oh, the distressed collar. And there it is. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. What more can I say? I think the gray really works with the uh, panda dial there. Um, I'll leave links to everything down in the description. Now, uh, so what started my fascination with the Speedmaster actually it wasn't its moon going legacy it was uh, a largely forgotten but highly underrated little gem of a movie the american is an action thriller that was released in 2010. it is directed by dutch music video director and photographer anton corbain starring george clooney thekla royten violante placido arena bjorkland and paolo bonacelli it's based on the 1990 novel A Very Private Gentleman by Martin Booth. It was met with generally favourable reviews despite being incorrectly marketed more as an action-packed thriller. In fact, it was a beautifully shot, emotionally restrained and slowly paced European-style neo-Western mood piece. Short on dialogue and action, it focused more on long atmospheric sequences with largely impenetrable characters that draw obvious comparisons to the coolness of Alain Delon in Le Samurai by the great Jean-Pierre Melville. The inspiration of the film was the classic spaghetti westerns of Sergio Leone. In fact, you can see the 1968 classic Once Upon a Time in the West playing in the background of a restaurant scene uh, during which uh, our main protagonist um, Jack, played by George Clooney, of course, is, is dining in. And you can just make out Henry Fonda uh, in that memorable gunfight uh, face-off. So you're probably wondering, what has this got to do with Amiga Speedmasters? Well, it's no secret that Clooney is a brand ambassador for Amiga. And their product placement in this film is no accident either. However, unlike most clumsy attempts to integrate brands into a movie, like James Bond sipping Heineken, for example, which brings you out of the reality of the movie. The American is a shining example of when it's done well. So much so, it kicked off my long obsession for the Speedy. So let's examine precisely how and why. The American tells the story of Jack, a specialist gunsmith, hired for contract killing, who flees to the stunningly beautiful Abruzzo region, east of Rome, after a failed assassination attempt on his own life. You are American. I say, a working vacation. You have the hands of a craftsman. You are good with machines. I do what I'm good at. You have done much sinning. All men are sinners. Everything I've done, I've had good cause to do. While in hiding, Jack contacts uh, his handler to get that one last job in. Obviously, he needs a bit of that. Uh, and simultaneously, he starts a relationship with uh, how should I put this? A Lady of the Night, played excellently by uh, Violante uh, Placido. And you, you start to see where this is going, right? Aside from the obvious attraction of the hauntingly sparse mountainous landscape and medieval hilltop towns, the well-dressed and understated style of Clooney's character is equally intriguing. As a gunsmith, he is all about precision 
and the watch is used in timing the assembly of a sniper rifle he is hired to create for a job. In my Speedmaster review, I discussed how the watch was critical in the Apollo 11 moon landing mission. The lives of the astronauts and mankind's history in the making depended on it. In the movie, it subverts that purpose by it being used as a tool to assist death and destruction. Despite its nefarious function, the watch matches Jack's unassuming style perfectly. A flashier Rolex Daytona, for example, would have been too obvious, maybe even raised suspicions. He certainly could afford it, considering the high paying but equally high risk choice of career. This stealthy aesthetic is very deliberately consistent throughout the film. Look at the choice of car he drives. The Fiat Tempra was one of the most reliable cars the Italian car manufacturer had ever produced and was intended as a cheap and easy to fix family car for long distance travel. It's uh, well balanced, it doesn't understeer or oversteer and if you had to escape from an emergency situation at speed, the car would stay very much on your side. It's perfect, a bit like a mil-spec watch, it does not attract attention. But also importantly, it's uh, affordable to maintain. Feels like I'm talking about a, a watch review here. But uh, at the same time, if you need to ditch it, it's not a massive expense. On a more profound level, the film is about the yearning for change and to escape an undesirable identity, a dangerous lifestyle and therefore an ugly reality. This is symbolised by the repeated imagery of butterflies throughout the movie and even in the score with the aria Un bel di vedramo from Puccini's opera Madame Butterfly that can be heard in the background of a scene. In art, the butterfly is most commonly a symbol for spiritual release the primordial insect transgressing and becoming an angel in many ways and obviously capable of flight. The closest humans have ever come to reaching the heavens is of course space travel, a coincidental parallel to the moon watch. Or perhaps I am just reading too much into this. The object I'll be talking about today is created by the Hopi people uh, from the southwest region and this object is a kachina and more specifically this is a butterfly maiden. Kachinas were spirits, there was well over a uh, hundred of them. They would live in the clouds and come down to visit the people. It's this whole sense of renewal. And really what these items are about is really keeping the tribal traditions going and really about a sense of renewal. <clears throat> sorry, terribly sorry to interrupt the narration there, but don't forget to like this video. It's the best way to support the channel. Right, carry on. One definite parallel is how the film was marketed with the retro styled poster. It's reminiscent of something you would imagine for a Michelangelo Antonioni movie of the 60s, a perfect aesthetic to match the classic stylings of the Speedy as well. Jack was always dressed very tastefully in neutral colours and never too casual or too smart. His strict style of form and function matched the balanced classic timeless design of the Speedy. We all know of the Speedy's versatility when it comes to straps and attire. Aside from suiting him perfectly, it was further understated by being on a black leather strap and not on the full bracelet. The Speedy has always been the choice of the matured gentleman. Here it reflects the stoic and serious nature of the character flawlessly. Like him, the watch is there to do a job with supreme precision. The mechanics of the gun assembly in various scenes reflects that of the watch. In many ways he is just like a watchmaker himself as we see him assembling, modifying, regulating and adjusting the rifle for accuracy. As a man on the run there's always that romantic allure uh, of the rolling stone dangerous lifestyle. Perhaps the obvious parallel would be James Bond, the most famous example with this more uh, glamorous luxury version of this. Exotic locations, fancy cars, fancy watches, uh, danger, high stakes, etc. The American, in a way, is a subversion of the classic Bond movie, but based on almost the same cinematic cliches, drastically toned down. There's no cheese wire to strangle an enemy or laser gadgets in this watch. It's used purely for what it was created for. As watch collectors, many of us aspire to having a smaller, more concise collection. The ultimate expression of this is perhaps the almost mythical one watch enthusiast. One man, one amazing watch, one mission and one purpose. 
In our increasingly busy online and offline world, there's an undeniable attraction to the purity and lack of responsibility of this lifestyle. While I have no intention of becoming a gunmaker or whacking people for big piles of cash, I can't deny that every time I wear my Submariner or Seamasters for that matter, I feel a little James Bond-esque. It's part of the charm of it, that imprinted childhood connection, the sense of adventure or the possibility of adventure. The watch becomes more than just the tool. It becomes a memento, a sentimental reminder of experiences and makes it that little bit more enjoyable. Certainly an advantage of having a smaller collection with fewer pieces equals more wrist time for each. Clooney is no stranger to playing these living out of a bag type characters. In the 2009 romantic comedy Up in the Air, he played Ryan Bingham, a corporate consultant who uh, always was traveling because of his job. His character's motivational speeches use the analogy, what's in your backpack, to extol living free of the burden of relationships, responsibilities, and material possessions. Now this is going to be a little difficult, so stay with me. Some animals were meant to carry each other, to live symbiotically for a lifetime. Star-crossed lovers, monogamous swans. We are not swans. We're sharks. In many ways, it is a deep-rooted wish to return to the adventurous American frontier lifestyle. The cowboy we talked about earlier being the ultimate encapsulation of this. Ultimately, the American also demonstrated the watch's strengths beyond its space-going fame in a more down-to-earth environment. Nobody can deny the importance and historic significance of the moon landings, but personally, the movie's tone, setting and style was certainly more relatable to me. Perhaps it's a deep yearning to return to the Italy I grew up in the older I get, or maybe it's the nostalgia of my own adventures traveling around Europe as a teen with just a backpack. Or perhaps because I simply dig the coolness that the protagonist unquestionably has. A throwback to more classic cinema stars like Steve McQueen, Sean Connery, Robert Mitchum, Michael Caine, Al Pacino, Denzel Washington, Toshiro Mifune, and so on. Something very much lost in today's cinematic icons. In conclusion, it was watch casting done right, which is not an easy thing to pull off, and I appreciate it for inspiring me to become interested in the world of the Speedmaster, its legacy, and the highly rewarding rabbit hole I subsequently fell into. So guys, there we have it, but before we go, I'd really love to hear what made you fall in love with the Speedmaster, if you are a Speedmaster owner and fan. Uh, if you're not and you have a favorite chronograph, what is it about that watch that got you interested? Was it a movie? Uh, was it seeing it on someone's wrist? Um, was it just, I don't know, watching YouTube videos? <laughs> what was it? Please do share in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.